There is no denying that our flamboyant, fluffy subject today might just be the most charming creature with wings in the coop. The proud little silky chicken never fails to tickle the aww reflex of anyone who sees them for the first time. But make no mistake, as adorable as these puffy poultry birds are, they can just as easily hold their own as a productive animal on the farm as they can on a show pedestal. Behind the silkies lies a rich history and an appearance that inspired tall tales and the fascination of nations when they laid eyes on them for the first time. Let's take a look at the silky chicken and all of its variations. The first written accounts of the silky came from the famous explorer Marco Polo, who wrote of the strange furry chickens he saw during his travels across Asia in the 13th century. It's unclear where exactly in Asia they originally came from. China and India are both candidates, but by the time Europeans came upon them, they were already so widespread that it was impossible to tell where they were first bred. They already had a rich and long-standing background long before Marco Polo recorded them in his writings. The Chinese regarded them as bringers of good fortune and believed that they could cure various ailments. We might just have the silky to thank for the comforting meal of chicken noodle soup when we're sick, since it was common to serve those who were ill with a soup made from silky meat, ginger, citrus, and wolf berries. In Japan, it was believed that the adorable chicken was used as a lure by unsavory mythical creatures to lull people into trusting them. And across Asia, they were kept in gardens and shown off as a symbol of wealth and status. Wherever they came from first, it's not hard to see why the regal-looking chicken was so widely regarded. And once Europeans became aware of the exotic new animal, they were equally taken with the charming chicken. They brought them back to their native lands and people were absolutely enthralled with the docile and cute bantams. Almost immediately, it was speculated that the silkies were the byproduct of chickens and rabbits interbreeding with each other leading to a chicken that had hair instead of feathers. But in reality, silkies always had feathers like any other bird, just much finer stranded feathers. In the beginning, the silky was mostly showcased as a cute oddity, and it took a while for it to catch on from a culinary standpoint. The very superstitious Europeans were immediately wary of eating an animal that had black bones, skin, and meat. The silky is entirely black beneath its feathers. Everything but their blood and feathers is pigmented black or dark blue. The curious new observers took some time to warm up to the idea of consuming them, but silkies did eventually make it onto the dinner table, especially once a few monasteries started experimenting with keeping the silkies among their other livestock and wrote favorably about this surprisingly hardy little bird. And since then, experimentation with breeding resulted in the silky, which had once only had pure white or pure black feathers, becoming very varied in its range of coloring and sizes. By the 1800s, the silkies had made their way to every continent on the earth. Today, they are not just reserved for the wealthy. It's not hard to procure silkies no matter where you are in the world. Silky chickens fall under bantam breeds. Bantams can be any kind of fowl that is smaller than average. Silkies usually weigh around three to four pounds, with roosters being only a few grams heavier than hens. The variety in their coloring is quite wide. They can be black, white, gray, and brown. Their feathers can be tinted by a bluish shade all over or only have the tips of their wings tinted a different shade than the rest of them. It really is remarkable how vastly different one can look from the other, yet still be unmistakably a silky. It's just impossible to mistake them for any other bird, and that's all thanks to those prominent pom-poms on their heads and their fluffy feet. Their feathers are fine and velvety smooth to the touch. Some have a distinctive comb, while others do not. From a show animal standpoint, that comb is indicative of a well-bred bantam. But honestly, the lack of a comb makes no discernible difference to a silky's size, temperament, or the quality of their eggs and meat. 
Combs and coloring really only matter if you are interested in their appearance for competitive purposes. As mentioned before, they are black beneath their plumage. Very few chicken breeds can claim this unique feature. The dark tone almost never goes beyond their skin. But the silky is pitch black all the way down to the bone. But they taste just as any bantam chicken would. Very much like regular chickens, just with a slightly gamey undertone. Quail meat is very comparable to silkies in flavor and texture. Nutritionally, silky meat is superior in almost every way. Per pound, it's lower in saturated fat higher in protein and in antioxidant carnosines than their larger cousins. And as far as egg quality goes, they have the same amount of vitamins and minerals as other chicken eggs do. There is a slight difference in taste, described as rich and almost creamy in texture, but the difference really is so slight that most people wouldn't be able to tell the difference, besides that they are smaller in size. In our opinion, Silkies have more pros than cons. They make for excellent backyard pets and producers, and an impressive sight on the livestock show circuit. And if you've ever kept any other kind of chicken, you'll find them a breeze to keep. Their fluffy feathers don't require any special care besides a clean and dry coop. The extra fluff on their feet don't like moist conditions, and they are prone to developing fungal infections on their feet when their coops are not maintained properly. This is a common condition to keep an eye out for any breed of chicken. But silkies are a little more sensitive to wet conditions. A simple solution is to build their nesting boxes slightly off the ground. Just add a gentle ramp for them to walk upon. Bantam fowl in general are more docile in temperament but none more so than the silky. They are remarkably gentle with humans and each other. You'll almost never see roosters fight, and they just love being handled. If a silky is raised with regular human interaction, it will actively seek out attention from us. Even the hens, who are very broody and capable mothers, won't blink an eye when you approach their chicks. Their remarkably calm and trusting nature makes them an easy target for predators, and hawks especially are prone to snatching them up from above. The poofy feathers on top of their heads obscure their vision, preventing them from seeing the danger flying above them. When setting up Silky's living space, make sure they have a roof or netting over their heads to protect them from airborne assaults. As far as egg production goes, silkies are not as prolific as hens that are bred for that purpose. You can expect around three eggs for a single hen every week, but given how quiet and small they are, you can always keep a few more hens to bring up the number of eggs you'll get every day. For the same amount of feed you'll need for regular-sized chickens, you can comfortably feed twice as many, if not a few more, silkies. Bantams don't need specialized feed to keep them happy. Chicken or game bird feed works equally well for them. And speaking of bantam breeds, they are much less prone to disease than larger fowl. If they are fed well and their living quarters are kept clean and dry, they'll be perfectly healthy and require little else to thrive. Hens are excellent mothers. So good, in fact, that farmers keep silky hens especially to hatch other egg-laying hens' eggs for them. In our race for optimal egg production, we've kept laying breeds confined to tight spaces and so far removed from their natural habitats that they've simply lost the ability to brood and care for their young. Silky hens are happy to hatch their own eggs and any others you place beneath them. Finally, the small and timid birds should not be kept with other fowl. Chickens especially can be quite violent with their own kind already, and the petite silky just doesn't stand a chance against them. Roosters especially can peck them to death or accidentally kill a hen if he tries to mount her. So it's best to keep silky strictly among their own kind. In our opinion, Silkies are just the perfect starter chicken for anyone who is new to keeping fowl. Small, quiet, and no-nonsense, you couldn't ask for an easier chicken to manage. And besides, who wouldn't fall in love with that proud plumage and fluffy pomp? 
Silkies are cheap to procure and a light on the pocket to maintain. Children and adults can find a great deal of enjoyment in them. And whether you keep them as pets, competitive birds, or production animals, there really aren't any drawbacks to having them around. So tell us, do you have silkies and what were your experiences with them? Or are you thinking of starting out with these gentle little birds right now? We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Drop a like and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a new upload.